Today I am going to explain subunit 6.1. Subunit 6.1 involves grammar, present perfect, plus four scenes, pronunciation, sentence stress, vocabulary, health. Let's get starting, started reading the text and discussing around the text. Do you have any idea of keeping fit? This brief text will suggest some ways of keeping fit. So be attentive. A lot of us spend most of our working day sitting at the computer. If you add this to the seven hours we spent sleeping, we could easily find that we spent nearly two thirds of our day without moving at all. We all know that exercise is good for both the body and the brain. Even a short amount of exercise every day can help us to feel happier and more relaxed. So, how does the world keep fit? We have looked at some of the latest exercise trends from around the world. To run in China. Have you ever worked in an office block and wondered how you can get to it? Perhaps you should try to run in. It's a sport you can do in the skyscrapers of almost any big city, but Asian cities can be particularly good. All you need to do is start at the bottom of an office tower and run up all the stairs until you get to the top. Tower running has become popular all around the world with important races taking place in some of the world's tallest towers. Like Taipei 101, the Empire State Building in New York and the China World Trade, Trade Center Beijing. Piloxing USA. If you enjoy dance classes like Zumba, but you also want to get rid of your anger, then Piloxing might be for you. Piloxing started in the USA, but has traveled quickly to the countries like UK. The sport is a mixture between boxing, Pilates and dance. Piloxing uses the power and speed of boxing, whilst building your muscles and strength with Pilates. All of this happens to non-stop load music and you learn some great dance moves too. Pedal boarding Brazil. When it comes to the end of a long day, what could be better than a pedal board on the ocean? It might look easy, but pedal boarding is a tough sport. You need to be strong to keep your balance. However, if you bring your boat down to the water at golden hour, just before sunset, the water is calm and the ocean will make you forget all your problems. Maybe you notice the word to get rid of. What does it mean? Get rid of means to make something that you don't want go away. Examples for this word? I have found a way to get rid of problems or I have found a way to get rid of anxiety. So I hope these ideas will be beneficial for you for keeping fit. Now let's look at vocabulary relating with health. Junk food, food which is not good for you like crisps, pizza, fast food, hamburger. Exercise classes, you know, fizzy drinks, a drink containing small bubbles of gas. Fresh fruit, vegetables, stress, worrying, alcohol, vitamins, you know. Running also, you know. Caffeine, what is caffeine? Caffeine is a natural stimulant most commonly found in tea, coffee and cacao plants. It works by stimulating the brain and central nervous system, helping you stay alert and prevent the onset of tiredness. Now let's define. Are these things good or bad for your health? Junk food, 
fizzy drinks, stress worrying alcohol are bad for your health. But exercise classes, fresh fruit, vegetables, vitamins, running, caffeine, relaxing are good for your health. Now we have extra vocabulary, page 156. I expect you already know the meaning of these words. So check the meaning of the sport from 1 to 30 below. Badminton, basketball, boxing, cricket, cycling, football, golf, hockey, horse racing, horse riding, jogging, Talking, you know, uh, doing the activity of running at a steady, gentle pace as a form of physical exercise, jogging. Photo L represents jogging. Then judo, karate, table tennis, rollerblading. You know what is rollerblading? Skate using rollerblades. Photo A, rollerblading. Then rugby, running, sailing, scuba diving. Scuba diving is the sport or activity of swimming underwater using scuba. Skateboarding, skiing, the activity or sport of moving on skis. Squash, squash. You know what is squash? Squash a game played between two or four people on a special closed playing area that involves hitting a small rubber ball against the wall. The photo G. Photo G describes squash. Okay. Snorkeling, snorkeling, the activity of swimming using a snorkel. Snowboarding, surfing, you know, swimming, tennis, volleyball, windsurfing and yoga. Now, which sports are in pictures? Photo A, we said rollerblading, photo B, Badminton, C, cycling, D, basketball, D, cricket, F, rugby, G, we said squash, H, aerobics, I, tennis, J, windsurfing, K, surfing, just surfing, L, we said jogging, and M horse riding. Let's back. So be ready to talk over the following questions. According to the article, why is exercise good for you? Why is tall running popular in Asian cities? How is boxing similar to other sports? And when is a good time to go paddle boarding and why? So, grammar point of today's lesson is present perfect tense form. Let me explain slowly. Page 138 for more practice, for more detailed explanation. Present perfect. The grammar points of today. Uh, the first thing we have to consider is the structure, indicators and usage of present perfect. Use the present perfect to talk about things that started in the past and are still true now. We have been married for 14 years. It means 
we got married 14 years ago and we are still married now. Indicators of present perfect are since and for. Use since to talk about the specific time something started, for example, 1992. Last week, Monday, I was a child. We have known each other since we were children. It means we are friends now. He has played football since 2002. But when do we use for? Use for to talk about a period, length of time, duration, right? 10 years, two months, a long time, an hour, a few weeks. Examples, I haven't seen him for a few weeks. I have lived in Barcelona for 25 years. When we want to ask the, about the length of time, we use question form, how long have you? It means duration, length of time. How long have you worked for Dell? But don't confuse difference between present perfect and past simple. There is a subtle difference between, okay? We use present simple for exact time and which happened at a specific time in the past. I moved to Spain in 2001, but don't use, I have moved to Spain in 2001, because precise time is used. Let's practice present perfect. So uh, underline the correct alternative to talk to complete the rules. Use present perfect to look back at something that started in the past and you have two choices. Finish or continuous now. Of course, continuous now. According to rule that I explained, we use present perfect. Uh, to look back at something that started in the past and continues, okay, continues now. We use for or since to talk about a period of time. Of course, for is used to talk about a period of time and question form, how long is used. And we use since, since to talk about a point in time when something started. For further explanation, I suggest to complete the table with the phrases in the box. Task C. Since 2005, for ages. Since July, for a long time. Since Saturday, since I left university. For two weeks, months, years. Maybe you notice duration, length of time we see here. Since 2 p.m. Since last night. For an hour or two. Since I was a child teenager. Maybe you noticed you comprehend the structure of present perfect. Use have, has, plus past participle and let's complete the sentences using the verbs in brackets and adding four since as appropriate. I have done karate since I was a child. I have had this phone for two months. I have known Marcia since I was at school. We have lived in this town or city for 10 years. I have wanted to buy a new car for a long time. Now time is ripe for listening task 6.1. Listen to the question and write short answers with for and since.
but don't write the question, just short answers. Get ready. Unit six, fitness. Recording one. One. Do you live in a town or by the sea? Two. How long have you lived there? Three. How long have you lived in the house you live in now? Four. What is the name of your best friend? Five. How long have you known him or her? Six. Do you work or study? Seven. How long have you worked or studied where you are now? Eight. What hobby do you enjoy? Nine. How long have you done it for? Ten. Do you have a bicycle or a car? Eleven. How long have you had it? Okay, now I'm going to explain sentence stress. Sentence stress, the pattern of stressed and unstressed words across a sentence. Normally, this emphasizes is on words that carry important information, although this can change significantly, depending on the specific meaning the speaker wants to communicate. Now, listening task 6.2. Listen and define the question, write the question. And listen again and define the stressed words. Unit 6, recording 2. 1. How long have you lived there? It is also already noticed long and lived are stressed. Two. How long have you known him? How long have you known him? Long and known or stressed. Three. How long have you had it? Long and had are stressed. Four. How long have you studied? Long and studied are stressed. Five. How long have you worked there? Long and worked are stressed. I hope you comprehended the center stress. That's why it emphasized the words that carry important information, okay? So let's continue 6.2. This 6.2, subunit 6.2 involves grammar, may, might, will, pronunciation, intonation, certainty, uncertainty, and vocabulary food. So vocabulary. Working peers, how many types of food can you think of? 
for each of the categories below. Vegetables, maybe potatoes, carrots, broccoli, lettuce, maybe. Desserts, maybe cake, biscuits, ice cream, so forth. Meat, chicken, duck, fish, lobster, fruit, pineapple, apple, orange, melon, mango, so forth. So let's look through page 158. So which of these foods do you never eat or eat a lot of? And which types of food drink do you think are very good, very bad for your health? Try to think of them. Grains, corn, wheat, oats, meat, fish. I'm pretty sure that all of you know these words. Meat and fish, seafood, chicken, duck, beef steak, leg of lamb, fish, shrimps, mussels, lobster, dairy, milk, cheese, cream, yogurt. Products are made of milk, desserts, jelly, cake, biscuits, ice cream, drinks, tea, coffee, orange juice, fizzy drinks, vegetables, soya beans, potatoes, carrots, spinach, broccoli, cabbage, lettuce, peas, onion, garlic, cucumbers, cogetes. And fruit, pineapple, apple, orange, grapes, grapefruit, bananas, kiwi fruit, mango, melon, watermelon, plums, lemon. Okay. Discuss the questions. What is your favorite food? Will you try and answer these questions? Do you ever eat food from other countries, cultures? If so, what? Which of the dishes in the photos do you often eat or do you sometimes eat or do you never eat? Would you like to try and of them? Falafel. Falafel belongs to Egyptian cuisine. Sushi belongs to Japanese cuisine, paella belongs to Spanish cuisine, and burrito belongs to Mexican cuisine. When you stress, when we want to stress particular meals that belongs to particular countries, we use the word cuisine. For example, Azerbaijanian cuisine, Egyptian cuisine, Greek cuisine, so forth. Look at the pictures and read the sentences about food of the future. Do you think they are true or false? In the future, more people may eat insects. It sounds so weird and ridiculous, right? Second one. In the future, we will be able to make food from mud, wood or seaweed. It also sounds weird, right? Three, in the future, kitchen tools like knives might give us information about the food in the kitchen. This idea is immensely awesome, but at the same time, unbelievable. Listening task three, six point three. Listen to an interview, be attentive. Listen to an interview with a food expert and check your answers. Get ready. Unit 6. Recording 3. Sue, what are the latest food trends? We have lots of interesting developments and even possible solutions for world problems related to food. Great. So can you kind of... Well, the key question is always what to eat. And here we may see some changes, things that you might not understand as food groups. Can you give an example? An example is insects. <laughs> As a food group. Well, in Latin America, Asia, and Africa, people have eaten insects for thousands of years. But it's only now that we in the West are seeing what a good food source they are. 
Insects are rich in protein, low in fat, and easy to farm. <laughs> so spiders and ants may be on the menu. We might see them on menus in the West. Now, technology will also play a part in the future of food. Scientists have already found ways to create meat in the lab. Right. But it tastes awful, doesn't it? <laughs> it tastes awful now, but maybe it won't in the future. And as well as meat made in a lab, we're also looking at ways to make proteins out of things like mud and wood <laughs> and also seaweed. It seems incredible that mud might be something we can eat. <laughs> well, it's the same for seaweed, which again is easy to farm because it's everywhere. Um, other developments on your kitchen table include an intelligent knife. What's that? An intelligent knife will tell you all about the food it's cutting. So say you cut a slice of meat. The knife will tell you how much protein and fat is in the meat, where it's from, how old it is. That's amazing. Really giving people more information about their food. Now let's check answers. We may see some changes, things that you might not understand as food groups, according to listening, right? As food groups. Insects are rich in protein, low in fat, and easy to farm. Third sentence, scientists have already found ways to create meat in the lab. Four, we are also looking at ways to make proteins out of things like mud and wood and also seaweed. All the developments on your kitchen table include an intelligent knife, really giving people more information about their food. So, grammar point again, may, might, will. Let me explain slowly. What do they stand for? May, might, will. We use may, might plus infinitive to talk about probable situations, to speculate something, right? We may also use may, might plus infinitive to talk about future possibilities that are not certain. I might go to the party. It means that it is not certain that I'll go to the party or not. They might not arrive today. So the possibility is not precise. We may have some problems. She may not like the dress. But don't use contractions. You know what is contractions? Contractions, reductions of grammar forms. Contractions with might not and may not. The question form with might is rare. But the question form is, may, is used for asking permission. It is a polite way to ask. May I sit here? May I open the window? So I'm going to repeat. You use may, might to talk about possibilities. You may use might and may before the subject to ask questions, but might is rarely used. May is used for asking permission. Is It is a very polite form. What about will? We use will plus infinitive to talk about a future prediction. Negative form is want, contract, contracted here, right? Will not. I will be home at 9 p.m. tonight. It means that exactly. I will be at home at 9 p.m. tonight. She won't come here tomorrow. Will they win the match? In spoken English, use the contracted form of will, a passive of a double L in positive sentences, but don't use it in the questions. I'll be at, I'll be home at 9 p.m. tonight. 
it is common to you think or don't think plus will like I think she'll get the job. I don't think I'll go to the university next year. So let's practice. Read the sentences from A to D and answer the questions about the phrases in bold. So first of all, let's look through the questions. Which one is negative? Variant D. It tests awful now, but it won't in the future. Negative. Second question. Which one means probable, but we don't know? Variant A. An intelligent knife will tell you all about the food it's cutting. And B, we may see some changes. And third question, which one is a strong prediction about the future? C, an intelligent knife will tell you about the food it's cutting. So I'm going to revise one variant D. Second one, A, B. And third question, C, okay? Intonation, certainty and uncertainty. Task 4A. Write responses to sentences from one to seven. Use the prompts in brackets with might, might not, may, may not, or will want. So we are having a picnic. It might rain. I am becoming a vegetarian. I will lose weight. Let's go to the best restaurant in town. Of course, it will be expensive, definitely. If you are going to the best restaurant, no doubt it will be expensive. I want to stop eating junk food. I will feel healthier. Let's go to the cave for breakfast. It might not be open. It's a probability, right? Six, I want to try eating octobus. You may not like it. Seven, I'm going to do a cooking course. You may enjoy it. So sentence structure, writing point, uh, writing part, sentence structure. How important is food in your life? We have a text. In my late 20s, I moved from my home in Medellin, Colombia, to the United States to continue my studies. It was a good move, but I missed my family and friends. I also miss Colombian food. In my country, we have a lot of special dishes like mondongo and peto, and we take our time preparing food. People say we cook with love. While in the US, I met as international students and twice a month we got together and cooked for one another. It was wonderful and I tasted food from many countries, Libya, Poland, Tunisia, Peru and Japan. I also made many good friends. My time in the US taught me the importance of food as a part of culture and a way to bring people together. So we read the extract from a blog below and now it is your turn and let's discuss the questions. So when and why did Fernanda move from her home city? She, in her late 20s, to continue her studies, he moved right to America. What does she say about Colombian food and Colombian cooking? She missed Colombian food, of course. In her country, they have a lot of special dishes like mondongo and peto. What food did she 
try in the US and who made it. She tasted food from many countries, Libya, Poland, Tunisia, Peru, and Japan, and international students made their special dishes. Now, speak out tip, short sentences may sound unconnected. Don't forget to look through speak out tips that are suggested at the end of the units or after some grammar patterns. Short sentences may sound unconnected. Long sentences can be difficult to understand. Try to use and and try to use and conjunction and only once in a sentence. In the next sentence, use conjunction also. OK, also look at your last piece of writing. Can you use this tip to improve sentence structure? So we completed subunit 6.1 and 6.2. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next lessons. Bye.